And there's a bat butt. Hey, what's up, you guys? Shardimus Prime here, doing another Hot Toys figure review. I'm not a Hot Toy, but the Sideshow Collectible Six Scale Marvel's Deadpool. If you try to pick up one of these, you can get them now at Biggity Big 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 Big. Get your big badass toys at BigBadToyStore.com. Click the link in the description below. Now, there's two versions of this figure that are out there. There's a Sideshow exclusive that comes with the extra head pull accessory. This version right here does not have that. Anyway, nice image of Deadpool over there, and then you can see his thumbs pointing at himself so he's like hey and then you know on the back over there he's like hey and then on the side there's some more of that image get a Deadpool logo and then another Deadpool logo and we can do the not hot toys plop all right and then you can see this bullseye right here with the Deadpool logo in the center and then it says Deadpool on the sides right over here and on the back it's the same image that we saw earlier and just so you guys know that there is an opportunity to win $200 worth of BBTS store credit through JC's channel so check the link below for that all right let's get to it and crack this thing open and here is Deadpool out of the packaging an outstanding figure I cannot lie man I have been having a great time posing this figure around I love the accessories that it comes with. The posability is really good. Unfortunately, the legs don't stay up when you move them up. You can see it right there that this leg is moved upwards, but it's only staying like that because the foot is resting against the dynamic stand, which it does not come with, even though the stand that it does come with is pretty cool. But anyway, awesome piece. I'm very, very happy with it. Let's take a closer look at the ton of accessories that he comes with, and then we'll take a closer look at Deadpool. Yeah, that's a ton of accessories, man. Okay, this does not come with an instruction booklet, which I thought was a little interesting. And you do need to have an X-Acto knife. I highly recommend you get an X-Acto knife for the stickers, which I'll explain in just a moment. So anyway, we have 10 interchangeable hands over here. You get a pair of fisted hands, a pair of sword holding hands, a pair of gun holding hands. You get this grenade holding hand right over here. You get a peace sign for the left hand. Then the right sign has the A-OK. -okay. The thumbs up, you get two grenades. You get the knife with the sheath. You get this big ass gun over here. You get the two pistols. You get the two swords, two heads. You get 12 wrist pegs over there, which I think is great. So they're basically telling you to apply them all to these hands right over here but these are nice and soft and rubbery so you don't really need them that much and you get all those stickers and then you get this display stand so here's taking a look at the base that he comes with it looks like this rusted metallic floor right here it looks pretty cool you get the Deadpool logo and then you get Marvel written on the back of it I feel like the Marvel logo should have been on the front somewhere I guess and you also get the adjustable cradle so you can move that up and down as you wish and then you have the two speech bubbles right over there that are connected to these rods and you can move those up and down and swivel them around it's actually really tough getting those in there but I did get it to work and then there's a third one right in the middle which I was not able to use so anyway you get these two speech bubbles right here and the way this works is that you have this sticker sheet and you can see you get these four Deadpool emojis and then you get all these puns right over here which are pretty cool but the only thing is is that these are adhesive stickers so if you just put it on there it's gonna be stuck and very difficult to peel off as a normal sticker would be now I did see that guy that from a uh, sideshow he what's it called uh, how to be a poser. He said, you know, just put the sticker on there, but do it very lightly so that you could peel it off. I think that's a terrible idea. I recommend looking for a corner of the clear section so you could see there's like a little clear corner right over there. And then find an edge on the speech bubble so that you have that clear corner on the edge. Now you could press down on it a little bit, and there you go. And then you get your exacto knife and you just dig underneath there so it leaves a little bit of an air gap and then you could lift up and then you could peel this away. I don't think this is a very good approach to having this. I think Kotobukiya's idea of having the little whiteboard thing with the pen, uh, I thought that was a much better idea. I mean, this is still really fun though, and I did have a good time posing the figure around and getting into all these poses with the speech bubbles. Now looking at a couple of these interchangeable hands, I think the paint apps came out great. I really like the sculpt on all of these. Just really nice attention to detail with the wrinkles and the seams on the hands. Same thing with all of them over here. Uh, one thing is on just one of the sword holding hands, I did get a splotch of red paint, but that's the only one that has anything like that going on with it. 
Here's the peace sign one, looking really good. And I like that they're made out of this really soft material over here, durable soft material. And you do get all these interchangeable pegs right over here, which you don't really need so much. It's not very difficult removing these. Now here's a close look at the two Deadpool grenades. These have some really nice paint on them, especially on the red. I like how they're all dirty, and I like the expression that we get right there. That's really cool, and you get this real metal pin. It does not flip upward. I was kind of hoping you could get it to flip upward, but still, I really like these a lot. We also get his knife right over here, which looks really good. I like the detailed paint right there on the sheath. This part actually did come off on me, so I had to super glue it back together, but you know, it's okay now. And then you can just pull the knife out right there. It looks like a Bowie knife, I don't know, let me know in the comments below, but I really like the silver paint that they used for the blade, it looks really good. Now you can add this knife anywhere you want, I recommend clipping it onto this boot right here, and don't shove it down there too much, or else it's going to be difficult taking it off, but I think that looks pretty cool. And he comes with these two pistols, which are identical to each other, these look awesome, oof, I just love all that detail on there with that paint, it just looks very real, I know this is real metal right over there. Looking at the barrel, just looks really good. I keep wanting to shove this in, but it's not supposed to really move. Or is it supposed to move? Yeah, I don't think it's supposed to move. Well, whether it's supposed to move or not, I'm making it move right now. Oh God, see? Please, instructions next time. And the holsters for the guns are great. They're just held together by magnets with that strap right over there. And then you can just go ahead and just put this right through here. And then just wrap this around the back. And it stays nicely. I like that. Sometimes it does pop off, but it's just very easy to just get that to connect again. I like it. And you get this huge mama jamma right over here. Looking fantastic. I love the overspray paint right there. Looks really good. Great attention to detail on this. I like that gunmetal color right over here. They have some nice silver wear on a lot of the edges. Just looks really good. I'm liking it. And then you have this piece that you actually have to attach after you get it out of the packaging. You just slide that through right there. So that's really cool. I like that. Now, I think my favorite accessories that come with this figure are these katanas. I think these are absolutely amazing. I love these. Now, at first, I really thought these were made out of metal, but they're not. They have some nice weight to them, and I just love the silver paint. I would have preferred actual metal, like how we got on the Wolverine Claws, you know, the movie figure from Hot Toys, but this is still really cool. I really like the grip over here. That looks really nice as well. He's going to the sheaths very nicely. Haven't damaged the paint or anything like that. And then for the sword storage, you get this little metal clip right here on the back of each of the sheaths. And then you can just clip it onto that little spot right there. Which can be tricky sometimes, but there it goes. And then we can get the other one right on here. So yeah, it's not too bad. The pouches clip on the same way. So we get the two head sculpts with Deadpool. And this is the first head sculpt I'm showing off because this is how I was introduced to Deadpool. I was 10 years old and my cousin took me to a comic book store and I remember it was the four part mini series of Deadpool way back when and this is how he looked. He didn't have the little drippy thing. And I just thought he looked really cool because he reminded me of Spider-Man and I just did not get the sense of humor way back when. Uh, I was just too young, just didn't follow it. Or too stupid, I don't know, one of the two, or both. Anyway, the eyes are painted out very nicely. It's kind of hard to see, but they're not just white. They have white in the center and then there's a tad of gray going around them, which I think looks great. I love the black paint just fading in and out of those wrinkles over there. You can even see the ear and the back of the head looks really good and everything. Now a common complaint is that the suit does not match up with the head sculpt and I totally agree with that. I think they should have gone with the dirty color for the majority of the suit and I think that would have matched most of the head right over there. So you know if you cannot look past that then I don't recommend you get this figure because it's there. I mean it's just like that. And there's some parts of the suit that are even brighter as you can see right over there. It does get brighter. But anyway let's look at the second head sculpt. You just pop that off and just pop this one on and interchanging the heads is very easy and then we get our goofy eyed Deadpool right there and again you can see you have that white paint with the gray going around it and then the wrinkles and the sculpt just look fantastic I like the stitching throughout you get a little dip right over there in the back of the head Really liking both of these head sculpts a lot. I had mentioned in my little preview video that I wish it only came with one Deadpool head sculpt. Then instead of two, it came with the Wade Wilson head sculpt. I have to take that back. I am very happy with both of these. Now looking at the rest of the figure, oh my goodness, this thing comes with a ridiculous amount of pouches. I have put some aside, and I think the pouches look really cool. I have just these three extra ones, and you could place them anywhere you want to. They have these little clips, just like how this knife has, and you could put it anywhere you want to. So I think 
think that's pretty cool that you could do that, but they do fall off somewhat easily, especially when you're trying to pose them around. They just plop off like a guinea pig takes dumps, you know? If you have a guinea pig, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, I really love this texture detail that we get right over here on the shoulder pad. The paint looks absolutely fantastic. And I really like that we get a black baiting effect on the fabric of the figure. You can see we got this kind of quilted pattern going right over there on the shoulder, but that's the only part you really see that. And here's looking on the back right there. These straps look great. They look like they're made out of real leather, which they're not, but I think they're awesome. And then these little pieces right here have some nice paint detail on them as well. And I really like that you get these elbow pads right over here too. This looks really good. I'm digging that. Then the arm looks really good right there as well. And not only did they add some black fading for the fabric, but they also gave the black areas some nice brown highlights, which I think is really good too. Then you get the Deadpool logo right over there. Uh, one thing that does bother me a little bit about this figure, oh, there goes a pouch, is that no matter what you do, as soon as you start moving the legs around, uh, his fly opens up. And it's not really so bothersome right now because this strap is hiding it, but you can see that his fly is open. Anyway, coming right here, you get these cool knee pads, and they're held together with this little elastic piece. These do droop down on me a lot, but you know, they still look very cool and they're still workable. I'd rather have them be a little bit too loose than too tight. Then looking at his boots look very nice, very nice detail on them. Nice gold paint right there. If you look at them closely, you can see that we get some color variation with the paint. And then the bottom of his boots look fantastic. I love these cleats. I think this is great. I think that's a very nice addition. It actually really does help the figure pose around and whatnot having those there. And even some nice paint detail at the bottom of the boots. So to show off another display option with this figure, you gotta pop off the feet and pop off the hands. And you could remove these guards right here, remove that part of the boot, and then put everything back on here. And boom, you get a second look for Deadpool, which works out, you know, you could say this might be a little bit more comic accurate, depending on what you've been reading. The legs do look very skinny though, <laughs> and it does look a little bulky right up here on the arms, but I'm just saying, man, if you wanted to have it displayed like this, if you wanted this look, I don't think it's too bad, you know, but I actually prefer the other look where, you know, the boots and the arm guards are on there. So for the most part, I do like the articulation on this figure, but I do have my gripes, and if you're of the age of 21 or older, I'd like you to join me in a game of when when the pouch falls, you take a shot. So I have my little spidey glass right over there. and Just a halfer. It's kind of early in the day. Anyway, you can move the head up quite a bit, which is awesome. As you saw at the beginning of the video, you can move it up very far. I like that a lot. And you can move it down very far too. You also get side to side movement over here. And you do get a lot of neck pivot as well. And then this fabric right here will gap on you sometimes. And, it's, and it is actually very easy to just tuck it underneath the head right there. You get shoulder joints that move outward very far. I like that. And you can rotate the arms forward. Oop, that was only a fist. Does not count. And I'll put that right back on there. So before I get into the articulation, if you're of the age of 21 or older, please join me in this little game of if a pouch falls, you take a shot. So I have my little spidey shot glass. I got a little half or right over there. Okay, so the head can move up quite a bit. I really like that a lot. That is awesome. And you can get the head to move down a lot as well. You do get side to side movement and you get neck pivot over here and you can turn it sideways. Occasionally, you will see a gap and it's very easy to just tuck that fabric right underneath there. Now you get shoulder joints that move outward that much and you can move them downward only that much and you can rotate them forward a reasonable amount. Uh, just that much right there. Oh no wait, there we go. Okay, so it moves up all the way over there. Uh, you do get an elbow bend that does meet at 90 degrees. I feel like, yeah, you do get an armpit joint that moves in and out just a little bit. We also get a bicep swivel. We also get the wrist, whoop, the wrist came off, doesn't count. Anyway, you get the swivel and it does hinge up and down a little bit over here. And you do get a diaphragm joint. Let's see, yeah, it just bends forward that much at the diaphragm and it really barely bends back just that much over there. And you do get some diaphragm pivot over here as well and you can rotate at the diaphragm too. You do get a waist crunch over here, so with both joints together, and then this thing, ah, this is very frustrating. So, early on, this just came undone over here at the back of the figure, and you can snap that back into place. It is frustrating, and it is one of my bigger disappointing gripes, and there is a bunch of pouches lined up over here, but I just removed all of those just so that it would be easier to put that back and demonstrate. So, it's not necessarily broken, it's just 
irritating so you can just put it right back in there and it'll stay unless I unplug it again but anyway uh, you do get the waist swivel and there it goes just coming off again so yeah very irritating no pouches came off during that edit by the way and then the hips move outward very far like that and you can get him kicking forward only that much as I said at the beginning of the video the legs don't kick forward as much as I would like them to uh, they don't move back you do get an, a thigh swivel right here and then the knees do bend twice to make a 90 degree bend. The ankles move down only a little bit. They only move up a tiniest bit, if at all. Actually, that's not even moving upward at all. And you do get side to side movement over here. And then you do get some ankle pivot. And not one pouch fell. Is that amazing or what? Now this is a 1-6 scale figure. And Deadpool's standing at about 12 and a half inches tall. Then here's Deadpool next to a couple of Hot Toys. We have the Hot Toys Star-Lord figure. And then the Amazing Spider-Man 2 Spidey figure. And this guy fits in line perfectly with these Hot Toys figures. And then to compare this Deadpool to some other Deadpools, we have the Toy Biz Marvel Legends Deadpool, the Hasbro Legends Deadpool, and Kotobukiya's X-Force Deadpool with the erasable marker right over there. And then here's Deadpool next to the Marvel Legends Big Time Letdown Spider-Man. Deadpool, what a hack. Who are you ripping off more, huh? Me or Deathstroke, huh? Whoa! Whoa! Now doing the stop motion segment was difficult because there are times where he fell over and when he fell over little pieces of metal that hook on to the straps and everything uh, those came off on the katanas and some other parts of the figure so I did have to use my crazy glue so if you're using this guy for stop motion be wary keep your brush of crazy glue around uh, other than that collectors are just going to put it in one pose and then leave it there for a while and then change it again later on it'll be okay it's about more or less as delicate as a Hot Toys figure so you can't be too surprised there but I feel like he is a little bit more articulate than some of the hot toys. Anyway, I hope you guys liked my review. If you did, please hit the like button. Click any of these boxes right over here if you want more shark in your face. If you have the age of 18 or older, please check out the Patreon account. Your support is much appreciated. If you're any age, check out my Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and go to MarvelousNews.com for a photo gallery of images from this review. I took a lot of pictures of this guy. All right, I'll catch you guys later. Peace. Well, if it's in the glass, you gotta finish it.